Hello and welcome to this brief tutorial on using Git on CHPC resources. This is not meant to be an exhaustive tutorial and it won't go into any real details about using Git. It's meant to be a brief introduction to using Git on the Linux clusters and then some instructions for using it if you have Mac OS or Windows. Git is used often for software development because it allows people to collaborate with each other without having to coordinate very well. Um, and it does this by having all users keep all changes made to the software locally on their own machines. And this can be really useful for research purposes. On Linux, you can SSH into a cluster, or really any Linux resource, and use Git from there. Now the cluster versions are often out of date just for stability. But there are more up-to-date packages, so if you go to chpc.utah.edu and search for git, you find this page, which has instructions for getting the most recent packages. And these instructions change based on your shell, so make sure you read the little blurb underneath this. And you'll see now that I have the more recent version of git. At this point, I'm just setting up a little test environment that I can showcase some of the features and it works as expected. For a remote repository, you can use gitlab.chpc.utah.edu, which is a server that can be used to host your projects. And you can log in with your university ID and password. I'm just creating a project called test underscore repo. You can give it a description that will be visible on the website. And then you can also set privacy settings. Private means only you can see it and only the people you grant access to. Internal means anyone who's logged in can copy the files. And public means anyone can copy the files, which is useful if you're working with someone outside of the university. There are some instructions in the lower left-hand corner of the screen right now. And you should follow these so that your commits are tracked properly. So I'll just run through this quickly and configure my username and my email. And then you'll also need to add the remote repository to your local repository so it knows where to submit files. And you can do this either through SSH or HTTPS. I'm going to recommend SSH for CHPC resources simply because you might run into trouble with HTTPS if you're using outdated packages. Now if I try to push these changes, push some files, so I'll make a file in the, right now. <laughs> if I try to push these changes, I won't be able to do it because I haven't configured my SSH key. This can be confusing at times because I haven't received any errors yet, but when I try to push it, I will get this pop-up that says enter passphrase for key and then some file on my system. And this might this message might be different depending on whether you've done this before. In order to fix this, you should go up to the top right hand corner and go to your SSH keys settings. If you don't have one, you need to generate one. If you're using a different operating system too, this can change, but for Linux, it's the same. You can run the command in the top left corner of the screen, which is ssh-keygen-trsa-c, the name of your key, dash b4096. You can press enter to save it in the default file if you don't have a preference, and y to overwrite any existing keys. You do want to choose a good passphrase because this takes the place of your university ID and password when you're trying to push files. And now we have a key. So let's go back and try to upload this. You'll notice there are two files in the terminal, but you want the one that says public key because the instructions say to paste the public part so that's the second file. 
the one that ends in dot pub. And that's the public part of your SSH key. So copy all of the contents of this file and paste them into the text box. The title will be added automatically and you can click add key. Now if you try to push your files, you'll get the same dialog that asks for your passphrase, but this we have now created, so it should work as intended. And sure enough, if I refresh the page, you should be able to see the commit that I have made, and the files that I have committed. This works on most Linux resources at CHPC, but you might have trouble with Windows resources if the packages aren't available. So in this case, I'm going to show you how to do it on your own personal Windows computer, and you can map a network drive to access your files from your computer um, and not run into any problems. I'll include a link to the video about mapping a network drive in the description of this one. This is just a brief uh, display of how to install Git on Windows. It's a program called Git Bash, and it can be downloaded from git-scm.com, which I'll also add a link to in the description of this video. It has a standard GPL license, very permissive. And I find that most of the default options work best, especially if you're um, collaborating with someone who might be using Linux or Unix uh, operating systems. All of these are personal choices, but if you're collaborating with other people, it's a pretty good idea to just leave them as is. This can take a few minutes. I've sped up the dialogue here by 16 times for the sake of brevity in the video. And that should be it. When you launch the program, you'll get a command line interface. And it actually works like Bash does. So I'm going to show how to just use Git on Windows. I'll create a directory called git in my documents, and then I will navigate there and initialize git in the program. Now even though Windows has a different file system than Linux, the commands are actually the same for this because git bash uses a sort of port of bash, which is most people's shell on Linux. So the commands are typically the same. And you can see here that git is working. And again, this works just like bash, so you can use commands like echo and others as well. And I've been using cd for change directory and ls for list. If you're on Mac, Chances are you already have Git installed, and if you don't, it'll just prompt you. So if you open up a terminal, and let me make this bigger actually, it's very hard to see. Okay, if you type in which Git, or just Git, you should either receive an error message or it should just show you, in this case, the path user bin git. And this means I have git installed. So if I run the command, I should get a help menu. Again, if you don't have git installed, typically you'll be prompted about whether you want to install it. 
and that's a fairly straightforward process so I'm not going to go through it you just follow the prompts on the screen and this works in essentially the same way as it does on both Linux and Windows so if I navigate to a folder that has a git repository in it which I believe is documents slash hello on my computer and if I run git status there I should receive the same message I've been getting from the other resources and there we go and again you can mount your file system on your computer and I, ha I will put a link to a video about that in the description of this one. If you have any questions, please email us at issues at chbc.utah.edu or stop by our office in INSCC 405. Thanks for watching.